Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with Creating Products Digital and Physical. Why? In the ongoing series of Creating Your Own Economy. This talk will be given to you in podcast form. As I was putting this course together, it occurred to me that without the why, people tend to get lost. People know they should save money. People know that they should do X, Y, and Z to improve their lives. But without a big enough why or a motivating factor or a greater understanding, these things often don't happen. So we're going to talk about the why of you should create products. And I will go with my journey of being a creative person, creating my own products, and really, really hugging that lifestyle very hard. It's, first of all, a very daunting thing to think that, hey, I'm going to create this product. Because the reality is, we live in a world that has really shifted away from that. And what I mean by that is, I grew up in the world of popular mechanics, Reader's Digest, There were so many magazines for kids that had projects in them. I was looking to prepare for this talk, and I was doing a little research, and it dawned on me that I have not seen a kid fly a kite in decades. When I was growing up, there was this thing called kite season, and you would make your kite. The simplest way to make a kite was to take newspaper and two sticks, maybe four, just depend on how fancy you want to be, and you would make your kite. And it was amazing the fun that you would have with something that you made. And if you didn't want to make a kite, and generally most stores, there was like these kites in the box. You just pull them out, put them together. Some had Superman on them, but they were all like paper and made of like bamboo wood. And I realized we shifted away from that. Because what made America great was the fact that we made stuff. That's one of the reasons that Germany is one of the most formidable countries in the UK because they make stuff. So if anything that will be derived from that lesson is making stuff is a very powerful way to sustain the lifestyle that you want. With the kite example, I was looking at it doesn't exist in the magazines. They're still out there, but people... Don't read them because I'm not going to get really too far off into the social engineering, but there were certain tracks that boys and girls were kind of pushed off into and boys were like, you should make something, you should make bottle cars, you should make gold cars. Boys would trick out their bikes, they would take them apart, put new handlebars on them, different size wheels, and that kind of went away during this gender re-engineering world. That everyone's can do it. Now, there's still boys that do it because the thing is, now it's the skateboarders or it's the extreme sports with bikes. And I think that's the reason that so many young men are drawn to these things because it speaks to their basic nature to create and to do something. Now, with that, understand that the why of creating products is it could literally change your life. I will start with my first thing with uh, creating products. A lawn service. It was a service. It was a product. I cut grass. I had a lawnmower. Went out and cut grass. And I made money. I didn't realize as a young man that that was a path that I would later regain my footing on. I made the most money because... I created the product, cut the grass, got paid. Other than gas and the lawnmower, and the lawnmower was a sunk cost. It was already paid for. And just literally cents. I mean, back then, you can get a gallon of gas for 30 cents. So I can turn my hard labor and the lawnmower into 10, 20, 15, 30, 40, 60. I know one week I made $150. And back then, that was a lot of money for a kid. I made more money than my mother made that week. And she thought I was doing some stuff illegally. 
But with that, you have to look at what happens. In the earlier part of the Hustler Mindset Project, we talked about narratives. And narratives are very, very important in regard to creating products because if you are going to be a good, decent, competent member of society, you will have a job. A side hustle is nice if it's a side hustle, but to be a proper person, you must have a job. So this is what most people do. They get a job and they prepare for a job. And we're not taught that creating our own economies, creating our own products, or creating our own services is really the way to go. We're not taught that. If anything, we're actually discouraged against doing those things. Which is what happened to me. Because I had the hunger to do entrepreneur things from a very early age. But get a job, go to school. Get a job, go to school. So I bought into that. But I always wanted to build something and to create something. And it wouldn't go away. So I went through this process of when I finally got back to and being able to create my own economy with my own my first real company. I will tell you I had, I'm up to 10 companies now. The first five were turkeys, i.e. they lost money or I broke even. But from a educational standpoint, they were outstanding because I learned a lot. Well, with the sixth company, I made money. I was providing a service for selling contract office furniture and it was really, really good. It was really, really expensive, but it was really, really good. The best job that I ever did, but once again, I'm still regurgitating this get a job. I bought some tabletops. And just to give you an idea, tabletops. When you go to a restaurant, you sit at the table. That tabletop is on a metal base. They sell them separate because... Industrial furniture or commercial furniture has to be very sturdy and people want different kind of odds and choices But that little table that you eat at the restaurant could be anywhere from 250 to 500 bucks just for that table Depending on what it's made of where it came from well I Was with a friend and he had all of these odds and ends of tables and table bases and it was just kind of crazy so I started saying, hey, I'll help you with this because he wanted the stuff gone. He didn't care what happened to it. So I would go there on the weekends and I would create these tables for material that was given to me. It was a lot of work, but I would make anywhere from five to ten tables a weekend because I had a process. I would put the tabletops to the side. I would stain the tabletops because, you know, my favorite stain was mahogany. So I would do a rich mahogany stain on the tabletops, put them to the side and I would work on the table bases, put them on Craigslist. I was selling these things for 150, 200 bucks a pop. But in my mind, it was like good side money to my main business, which was reselling office furniture. When I say reselling, I had brand new furniture that I got from manufacturers, and then I would resell it to end users. But if I would say, give you an example, a cubicle that modular thing that you sit in if you have an office a cubicle would cost me seven fifty maybe a thousand dollars wholesale i will sell it for fifteen hundred to two thousand and it was just like i was stuck on that because it was more prestigious and i was affiliated with these other companies it was just like ah but i made the most pure profit from my table making operation it was the most pure profit but because it wasn't as sexy as the you know the big lines i was like really from a dollars to cents standpoint i would have did much better if i had devoted myself to just making tabletops because i have a little bit of artistic talent i made them really funky I sold them a certain way and I sold industrial tables because here in Atlanta, there's an area, there's a, there's a lot of people that like the loft look and I made these things super industrial looking 
and they were going and they were going and I would deliver them. So I would do over two tables, make 400 bucks. Pretty good weekend. And I had to really go back and revisit that whole process to understand why it's so hard. Because understand, when you're born, when you're a little kid, you're very creative. You were just talked out of it. You were just like, no, 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 don't do that. Tonight. Unless you were in a certain kind of creative family that, you know, that really watered that creative grass in you and groomed the garden and made sure the fruit and the vegetables and all that stuff grew. Otherwise, it was like squashed out of you, but it's still there and you can tap into it. But the deal is, the big why is if you create something, you own it. When you create something, you own it. It's yours. It's a part of you. It's your baby. And it's an incredible feeling. The second part of that is, when you create something, the ability to make more money dramatically goes up. Give you an example of how being the creator, the distributor, because in this world, we're all saying, hey, I don't want to do the heavy lifting. I want someone else to do the heavy lifting. I'll give you an example of that, how much it can cost you. Let's take publishing a book through traditional methods. I've looked at this several different ways, and it really depends on what you want to do. If you're looking to be a speaker on a circuit, having a traditionally published book is a great calling card. Because you're not trying to make money from the book. You're trying to make money from the fact that you're a published author by a legacy or traditional publisher. You'll make more money giving a few speeches than you will from a year of royalties of that book, even if it sells very well. And this is the reason why. In your mind, imagine a pie chart. Now, in that pie chart, cut a line right across the center. It's 50%. It's gone. That's going to go to the retailers because they're buying your book wholesale from the publisher. Now, with the 50% that's left, draw another line. It's kind of crooked. 27, 23%. No, you don't get the 27%. The publisher gets the 27%. Now, with your 23%, draw another line. It's a little smaller, almost like one of those cheesecake slices of 5%. Then another line of 5 or 7%. You see where I'm going? That puts you at like 11% or say you get better representation of 13, maybe 15% tops of what you get from a product that you created. But because you're affiliated with so many people, the publisher, your agent, and an attorney, and possibly some other people, that you get an extremely small piece of the action of something that you created that's one of the reasons there's all of this churn and rigmarole and all this er those self-publishers are killing the publishing industry there's too many crappy books out there because the thing is the game is changing the game will continue to change publishing is just one area that people are creating their own products and doing extremely well and there will be more there's music there's art video in 10 years mark my words somebody's going to create this awesome movie in their house it may be a sitcom it may be a drama they're going to create this movie in their house distribute it online and it's going to be awesome and you're going to buy it i know that's just blowing your mind like a movie yes a movie because what's happening is People are starting to realize that they can create awesome stuff. And now, due to the internet and several platforms on the internet, they can distribute this stuff. Without YouTube, I would have not been able to make a full-time living for my publishing company. That's how powerful YouTube is. You know, people are like, oh, YouTube, hey, YouTube, YouTube. No, no, no. YouTube used correctly is one of the most powerful mediums on the earth so with this new creative economy with this new disruptive economy understand you want to be creating 
some kind of products. I don't care. And this is the thing. And let's really talk about it. One of the reasons that so many people will not create a product is they feel that they're going to fail. They feel that they will be laughed at. They feel that someone's going to say something bad. And I'm here to tell you that the possibility of those things happening are pretty damn good. I'm not going to lie to you and say, oh, no, it's never going to happen. It probably could happen. More than likely, it will happen. Your first few ideals might be pretty crappy. But that's kind of the thing. You have to go through those first few ideals to get them out of your system. Because I will tell you from experience, you start writing out ideals and then the first few, you're like, eh, I don't know about that. Then, whoa, number ideal number five or ideal number 30, or ideal number 138 or ideal 2000. You're like, whoa. And it's just like lightning at 3 a.m. in the morning. And it just, you, you have to learn how to produce good ideals. And the only way to learn how to produce good ideals is to produce bad ideals. And so many people are like, I'm not trying to lose money. I am not trying to produce a bad idea. They're only trying to be 100% winners, and there is no such animal. There's none. So with that, start creating your ideal sheet of anything that you can produce. We live in a world where anything sells. I have a friend who has a son. Son is really interested in metalworking. Went to a workshop on how to make new metalworking forgery, make horseshoes and stuff. This kid, who's 17 in high school, makes about 800 bucks a month making horseshoes and other things for people in his community. Yes, 800 bucks. And it, it, it kind of blows his mother away because, you know, he, he works a lot. He's got this for it. It's just like crazy because when you hear something like that, you're like, really horses? But it depends where they live, which is up in Alpharetta. There's a lot of people with horses and they need horseshoes. And he does other stuff because he is. And this is a source of distress for them because he is thinking of going to technical school to learn how to weld and become a metal worker. And she wants him to go to college. Now, this is the thing. I live in a pretty affluent neighborhood, and there's a lot of people around here with gates and ornate metal fences around their estates. Do you understand how much a gate like that cost? Those are custom gates. Those things cost tens to hundreds of thousands of dollars, and a metal worker makes them. Guy that owns the company and makes metal works fences I've called up and you know got some estimates, and it just blew my mind what a fence will cost. If you have a $2.5 million house sitting on two or three acres, that fence that you want to put around the house, including the metalwork and the cement pole, easily six figures. Easily. Easily. And the thing is, you know, she's worried that he will not be able to sustain himself, and he's already making more money than most of the kids he knows. Money's coming in. She sees it, but she doesn't believe it. Remember my first example when I was talking about cutting grass and how people talk you out of certain things? I had a great idea as a kid of being an entrepreneur and I allowed people to talk me out of it until I was like freaking damn near 30. Because, you know, I did entrepreneurial things, but I did them on the side. I did not do them as a forefront occupation of my life here we are here's this kid he's got a great idea he's got a talent he's making that kind of money and he's going to be you know because she's a friend as her son i can't get into it but he will be talked out of what he wants to do because she's putting so much pressure on him to go to school this happens to many people they have a great idea but because it's not socially acceptable and that's why you know creating your own products doing these type of things is a situation where people kind of look at you funny or they will say these words. That's really something awesome to do on the side. 
there is this, there are numbers and numbers of stories of people, quirky, not quirky, smart, not smart, that have created things, websites, podcasts, YouTube channels, and these people have created not just decent income, but incredible income. And no, it didn't happen overnight. Some of these people, it took 10 years. Some people, it took two years. But the deal is, and the thing that they all have in common is they created something that was different. Or if it wasn't, or it was a little different, or it was a little quirk that made it a little different, like the girl that made the light up flip-flops. She was a kid, and they're in Macy's now. Flip-flops have been around forever. Hers just lit up. So it doesn't have to be over-the-top fantastic to do well for you. That's another limitation built in into creating. Well, if I'm going to create a product, it has to be knock their socks off. Now, if we have any Seth Godwin people, you know, brown cow, purple cow, every day I see tons of brown cows all over the place. And when I go into convenience stores, I look at certain things. Lighters, the little knickknacks, the... And for years, I have seen the same stuff. Decades, the same kind of stuff. For decades. And in a convenience store. For decades. If no one's buying it, why are they still making it? Essentially, there is a market for virtually everything. This is the biggest problem with making money with a product. Discoverability. There are so many things in the world that are clamoring for attention that you can have something that is really, really good, but no one knows about it because of the lack of marketing, scaling up. There's so many things. But a lot of times, People use those as excuses not to create anything. Well, it's already out there. Uh, it'll be too much. You don't know until you try, which goes back to the failure proposition. So many people are afraid of failure that they would rather fail in the aspect of not even trying than to go forward and actually fail. I will tell you, failing is not fun. Is not warm and fuzzy, but in my opinion, I truly believe this is a critical part of being successful. You will learn so much more from failure than you will from success. And I'm not going to give you the failing fast because that's almost like let's just fail as many times as we can. No, I think you should try as hard as you can to make it perfect, to make it as best you can, and take the lessons that come. If the item doesn't work, because sometimes you will win right out the box. That's one of the things about creating stuff. There was, I cannot think of the name, this lady, she had this quirky style of fashion. And she made her own vintage clothing. Sight took off. People told her she was crazy. The thing is that you have to understand. And I'm going to talk about one of the biggest benefits of creating your own stuff. It's the money. And I will speak to my experience with my first book. I don't think I put it in there, but I turned down two book deals. And I still have people look at me like I'm crazy because that meant my book would have been in bookstores. And I would have had more publicity and so on and so forth. I've been in the publishing industry for year, four years, and I know that the only thing that would be true about that statement was the books would have been in the bookstores, but they wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have been as successful because this, this is the thing: storage auctions, reselling, Craigslist appeals to only a very small segment of the society. I went ahead and because I was the factory, the distribution line, I did it all. I made way more money doing my own thing because I will tell you my first advance was $5,000. That was the offer of $5,000. At the time, I was making more than that per month selling my own book. 
the second one was 10,000. And when I got that one, I was making more than that per month selling my own book. So just to give you an example of the, you know, we'll talk about publishing at some other point. But typically, if I was contracted by a traditional publisher now, which is being August 2013, the book might not come out until August 2014. That was another consideration because they wanted me to pull the books Stop selling the ebook, sign the contract, and wait. Understand, when you create your own whatever, and let's really just talk about creating products from a standpoint of cookies and cupcakes. One of the reasons that many people start these businesses is they're pretty inexpensive to start. And when I say pretty expensive, you can have a retail cookie or cupcake location for twenty, thirty thousand dollars. Just you, know, most of your costs will be with the ovens and the making of stuff and making sure that your place is permitted properly. It's not a lot of businesses you can start. Well, actually, that's not true. There are a lot of businesses you can start for that kind of money or even less that will sustain you. And that's one of the new things that's going on in the world because it used to be. That was not the case. That was not possible 10 years ago. And that's another thing. There's so many things you create. And we will, we will talk about the resources that are available. And when I say resource, I'll give you one. You could create a product in your head, right? Sketch it out. Now, the, the lines to China, if you want to go that route, are so open that you could create your product and there are companies and this is something you can do yourself without venture capital or big loans is depending on the product and how much it costs talk to the people in China talk to the factories and have stuff made four five six seven ten thousand dollars product shipped over here for you to sell understand it's not that totally 100% easy in application but the ability to do that for and the average man is available. And that this that's freaking fantastic. One of the things that I'm working on is creating a product and I want to have it created here in America. That's something I'm looking into, and hopefully I can get that together for this course. If not, I'll still put that information out once it's done. But creating products, physical or digital, is a great way for you to create wealth, real wealth. If you go ahead and do a research on millionaires, billionaires, and not the people who inherited their money, they don't count because someone else did the heavy lifting. But if you go, most of them, you know, because you hear that, hey, it's real estate, the Ford family, automobiles. You were here, you know, Walmart, he created a store. Uh, these folks created stuff, and no, it wasn't easy, but. If you create something awesome, the benefits may help your grandkids' grandkids. Very easy way. Not a very easy way. I shouldn't say, well, actually, it depends on what you're doing. It's an easier way to generate money than it is reselling once you get the initial creation done. And that's one of the reasons that so many writers are really excited and many writers are, like, pissed off because... The world has changed and it will be required upon you to be the factory, the distribution system, the marketing system, or to outsource that and pay for it. That's what's coming. But that, to me, is a beautiful option. Because if you look at the choice of what was offered to people years ago, this is fantastic. Let's talk about why people create things. Sometimes people create something because they can't find that thing that they need to do whatever task they need done. That is one of the biggest sources of wealth ever. People creating something for themselves to fix or solve a problem. People create things to save time. It's just like, I'll give you an example. When I was in the storage auction business, 
there were so many tools that I made for things that you know they didn't they didn't exist on the market. And I look back and I was just like, if I had just made it, because take example, I made a well, I modified a crowbar with a few other things to get in the safes because typically the plastic safes were really, you, I mean literally you could drop them on the corner and they would pop open. Not really secure. But the bigger safes, I had to create a special crowbar. When I say special, I filed down the tip of it and it took me like four crowbars to get it just right because I had filed down the first one too thin where it wouldn't work. So I had to file it down enough to slide into the hinge and pop it. Didn't exist, but I created one and it saved me a lot of time. But with the creative process, and I think that's one of the biggest things that I miss about the storage auction business, is it gave you daily opportunities to exercise your intellect and your, your creativity. I mean, how to load a truck. How, I mean, you always had to be creative because you never knew what the heck you were going to get out of those units. And that challenge was fun. Now, if you see this whole deal as a fun enterprise versus like, oh, I don't want to do it. Oh, it's too hard. Oh, Glendon's crazy. Yeah, it's going to be frustrating. But if you see it with the wide-eyed wonder that you saw life as a kid, it can be incredibly fun because the way that I see it, and this is just what I truly, truly believe, that we're going to go back to where so many people are going to serve their neighbors because everyone's going to be like self-employed to some level with a few people, well, more than a few, working for big corporations because the better jobs are just going to be really hard. To, they're going to be a ton of competition. It's going to be an incredible ton of competition. And what's going to be the vetting card to get in is you're going to have to have a lot of credentials that have nothing to do with doing the job <laughs> to get the job. You know, it's not like, you know, if you want to be a mechanical engineer, you need to have a mechanical engineer degree. I'm not talking about that. That makes sense. I'm talking about crazy stuff. But that's how I see it. But. Hopefully this stoked your creative fires. Uh, there's going to be many more talks this month about this and more, you know, practical applications. Now, as we get to the end, this is where the fun starts. I want you to pick a project, be a kite, a bookshelf, something, something that you in your house, you need something. I don't care what it is and make it. And I'm going to give you a resource it's a channel called Make on YouTube. Just watch it. You'll be amazed at the stuff that this guy makes. His name's Jimmy. He's always making stuff. And just think about it. Don't put any limits on yourself. It's like there's something in your life that you need made. Make it. Because if you make one thing, you can make something else. You make two things, you can make something else. Start the process today. All right, this is Glendon Cameron, and I will see you on the good side.